Oh, what's good, guys? It's your boy, Steve Trip Gaming. Yeah, I got banned. I don't care. Yeah, Electrum got limited. I don't care. Yeah, Firewall, it didn't get banned. I don't care. Pendulums are still the best deck. I'm literally in the car right in my car right now at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Making a video for you guys because I love you guys. I refuse to go to bed until you guys have a video of updated pendulums. I refuse. My whole family's asleep right now. I have cousins from Macedonia over right now. I have another friend sleeping over right now. I refuse to wake them up. I'm a good family man. You know, Pendulum, good family man. See, I'm a good, I don't cheat. I'm a good family man. Konami, unban me. So I decided to make my video in the car in the middle of the night to make sure you guys have this content. That's how dedicated I am. That's how dedicated I am. You think a ban is gonna stop me? If that doesn't deserve a like, I don't know what does. In the words of the GOAT, smash the thumbs up button right now. I want this video to be the first video on my whole channel that gets 750 likes, all right? 750 likes. I've never had a video with that much likes before. Let's get it done right now for this video in honor of Electrum and in honor of the pen god. Also press F to pay respects in the comments. All right, now, without further ado, there's a new game plan. There's a new game plan. I have neon lights in my car because that's a, that's a European I am. I got, literally got neon lights in my car. I don't know anything more European than that. Anyways, uh, this video is not a deck profile of new pendulums. Got the, got the mic out here, you know. Anyways, this video is the theory behind the new deck. I told myself now that I have all the time in the world that I'm banned, I can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm going to use that time that I used to literally play Yu-Gi-Oh. To explain theory. So last format, I did a whole bunch of things. I explored a lot of stuff so I could figure out myself as a YouTuber. I figured out what I am as a YouTuber, man. This is a combo-based, orientated YouTube. And I went away from that. I went away from my roots to be a sellout and do what other YouTubers do. No one deserves to be on this channel other than me. No one, no one, unless you're my boy, unless you're my boy and I want to promote your channel or something, no one, absolutely no one, unless it's for that reason. So moving forward, 95% of videos are going to have me in it. 90% of those 95% is going to be pendulums. And 100% of those 90% of those 95% are going to be incredible videos. Pen God math. It's getting hot in my car, so you know what, I'm sweating a bit. I'm going to put the AC on a bit, alright? If the AC makes noise, deal with it. Welcome to class. Class is in session. Theory video number one. If you don't care about the theory of pendulums and how this build that I'm showing you right now is the best build, the side deck isn't really a side deck, by the way, it's just like cards I might put in. If you don't think this is the best build, then skedaddle out of this video, or if you don't care about theory, get out of the video, because this whole video is about theory, and why I picked these, and the literally the theory behind the deck, the theory behind why I play which card, and that's extremely important in terms of understanding how to win. So for starters, Electrum, I love you, but we need a new game plan now. There's uh, We don't have three Electrums anymore, we need a new game plan. It's unfortunate, but the game plan changed. The game plan went from three Electrum to zero Electrum. We don't care about Electrum anymore. As incredible of a card as Electrum is, this is a lesson number one, in the new format, you can't uh, base your deck around Electrum because it could just get hand-trapped. All right, so if it gets hand-trapped, your whole turn finishes. It's done. It's over. You can't build your deck around that. You can't build your deck around... An Electrum that if it gets hand-trapped, your turn uh, ends, right? Uh, there's no second Electrum you can go into if it gets hand-trapped. That makes sense. So if it gets hand-trapped, you can't go into a second one. Which means you can't base your deck around Electrum. So moving forward, we don't base the deck around Electrum. We base... You ready for it? This is very important. Listen. We base the deck around one-card interruptions. For example, we now play six Jackals. We play three Jackal, three Cerberus now. We now play uh, seven odd Eyes Persona Dragon. 3 Persona Dragon, 3 Iris, 1 Terraforming. For those of you who don't know what Persona Dragon does, it's a 1-card interruption. 
stops monster effects from the extra deck, aka firewall's gone forever. Uh, or whatever nightmare card they put up that you want to negate or interrupt, like mermaid, whatever, anything. Negate any monster effect on the field from the extra deck. That's six, that's seven. That's 13 cards that negate monster effects. Next. Three amorphic sloth. Goki, auto win. That's 16 interrupt one card interruptions. Triple Bambuku is a one card totem bird. Triple harmonizing plus triple pen call plus triple alliance plus double janky. That's 11 magicians that after you pen summon is 11 one card interruptions. That, let's do the math here. 11. 3 Bambuku, 14. 3 Slot, 17. Uh, 20. 24. That's 30 one card interruptions that you have there. We're playing a 30 card, one card, 30 one card interruptions in the deck. And we're playing a bunch of spells to get plus cards and a bunch of monsters that have plus cards. So you don't just start with your turn with 5, you start with like 6, 7, or 8, depending on the hand. And a bunch of pendulum calls and a bunch of magicians to get good scales. A lot of 8, eight scales to make sure you have a full scales. And 30 one card interruptions. So the new game plan is you go in, you attempt to go into an Electro. If they interrupt it with a Hand Trap, no problem. Pendulum, three interruptions, boom, you win. That makes sense. If they don't stop the Electro, that's, like, it doesn't even affect you. If they stop the Electro, it doesn't even affect your play. You literally just use Electro's effect for the draw, mo for moving forward, and use and the send. So if they stop the Electro, let's say they have a Ghost Ogre. So you send a one-card uh, interruption like Jackal. You pen two one card interruptions from your hand and one from your extra jackal. You have three interruptions. Boom, done. You're you're done. Your turn's done. That makes sense. So the new way to play this deck is to attempt to is just one card interruptions. Thirty one card interruptions. Still attempt to go into Electrum to stop the, uh, you know, just to stop a hand trap they have. But if they don't have a hand trap, it ensures three interruptions. Sometimes if you have a really really bad hand, they're gonna stop the Electrum. Or even if you can't make an Electrum. You still go two or three interruptions because you have 30 one-card interruptions. That makes sense? Like, uh, if you draw two or three of the one-card interruptions, draw a plus card, you end up with three interruptions on field, uh, two scales that are going to survive for next turn, and a card in hand because you're going to draw a plus one. Like, every single turn has a plus one card or a plus two. Uh, depending how many plus cards you draw, that's how many turns or how many cards you end with for the next turn. So having three negates on board that are going to be pen summoned every single turn with scales that are never-ending, and multiple cards in hand, and typically uh, Electrum that you don't even use first turn that you could use in the following turn, that's how you win. This With this exact same deck list, I destroyed Brickstar, I destroyed Sky Striker, I destroyed Goki, I destroyed every relevant deck. I just went on, on uh, Dueling Book, dueled a bunch of friends and said, listen, play this, play this, play this. I have to test this ASAP before I post this online, and it works. This deck destroys the meta. This exact list right now, Again, this is my first official list that I'm coming out with. In the future, I'll find some kinks and ways to make this list even better. But for the meantime, this is the perfect list. Absolutely perfect list. I'm now going to get into it. That was the theory part, so I hope you understand the theory part. Now I'm going to go into the deck profile, all right? The theory is, for the for the rookies, just pay close attention if you didn't understand that. You have 14 turbo cards and a 48-card deck because you have six draw two cards, right? Or even 54 if you want to consider that, but... Uh, draw if you draw one of the turbo cards you go into electrum all right you with me draw one of the turbo cards go into electrum if you don't draw one of the turbo cards it doesn't even matter just pendulum summon the one card interruptions you have and in this format in this format goki loses to one or two interruptions you're bound you're going to have two or three interruptions like real real interruptions every single turn and they're pendulums so even if you draw too many one-card interruptions, let's say you draw four of them, they're just pendulum scales. It doesn't matter. That makes sense? So there's such a good ratio of high scale and low scale that regardless of what hand you draw, you're going to have two or three interruptions regardless. Regardless of the hand. Because all the one, you have 30 one-card interruptions and it scales. You're always going to pen some in the one-card interruptions. This is the perfect deck for a beginner. The absolute perfect deck for a beginner. It requires no thinking. Before, you had to think a lot with Pendulums. Triple Electrum. But now, even if you suck at this game, even if you're new at this game, all you got to do is just pen summon the interruptions and win. And it has odd eyes. So, even if you're new at this game, I highly recommend playing this deck. Because, anyways, I'll go right into the profile. But the game plan, little, the new game plan, make one Electrum if you can. If not, doesn't matter. And then pen summon three one-card interruptions and watch your opponent squirm as you win with the one-card interruptions. After you have three... Do not put up a fourth. A fourth, I figure out, is overkill. Three is all you need. The second you have three, 
save the other cards in your hand and use Electrum to plus for cards in your hand. Sometimes you could uh, pen summon three monsters that are one card interruptions and save the Electrum effect. Save, uh, use Electrum's effect just to draw and to add like a Wisdom Eye or something for next turn. That makes sense? So after you put up two or three interruptions, depending on the deck, save every other card in your hand or field to put into your hand. All right, 10 minutes into the video, we're now going to start the deck profile. That was a theory, not a deck profile. If you're confused about deck profile, rewind the video. It's important for you to win. All right, so for starters, we play three Wisdom Eye, three Harmonizing. Last format, Harmonizing sucked because you never use it because you go Firewall in the middle. There's no space for Harmonizing. This format, Harmonizing is fantastic because it's a one-card interruption. It turns into Omega if you're scared of whatever deck you're playing, Spear mode, whatever. But it also turns into a one-card Tornado Dragon, a one-card Dweller, or a one-card Exiton Knight after you clear their board and Exiton them without them knowing. All right, so Goki suck now because uh, it's a, after you side properly, it's very easy to take care of their board. And then after you just Exiton. It's literally that easy. Uh, we play two Janky, not one, because we don't want to banish it. It being level 7 is important, and its actual effect is extremely good. It's a one-card interruption that people don't uh, realize. Uh, it stops any light monsters effect. So it stops Firewall, Brick Stars, any of that. So it stops, it's a one-card interruption. Absolutely mandatory. Play two, or if not three, in this format. Also, it's a 60-card deck because uh, you want to play as many pendulums as possible uh, that are low-scale and high-scale. The more cards you play, the less of a chance you draw five low-scales or five high scales. Does that make sense? It's more of a mash, high, lower chance of drawing the same level scales, or same, yeah, same level scales, higher chance of drawing a different uh, combination of, of scales. This also allows you to play more one card interruptions, and there's so many good cards to play in Pendulum. Like, it's a, I could play a 100 card deck if I want to. There's so many good cards to play in Pendulum that uh, I literally have another thing out here I have another thing on my deck list. Uh, well, I don't have internet right now. Like, I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. I just screenshotted this. I can do the video for you guys. But uh, on my dueling book, I have a uh, new game plan part two, where it's just 75 more pendulum cards that I might throw in here and 15 more extra deck cards I might throw in. If you guys want, I can show you the other 75 cards I'm debating throwing in. But as of right now, this is the best list. Anyways, uh, double oath, because if you banish an oath, you really want to have, an, you really want to have access to an oath. And uh, harmonizing special summoning an oath is very relevant. If you want to, if you have an access to Electrum to pop something special Chrono and special level four, then instantly you get a uh, you get to utilize Chronograph that you summon up with the Electrum uh, and get a free Narito. So it's relevant to play two of both Janky and Oath Dragon. One purple poison. That's all you need. I might up it later uh, in case uh, Dracos are relevant because Dracos didn't get hit. It might be relevant. If Dracos are relevant, you need to run three poisons. So you're gonna side two. One Black Fang, uh, it's not good uh, without uh, Triple Electrum and Venom and, and all that, so an Astro. Uh, so just play one, one Time Gazer, you still need to play it. Triple Darker, one zero. I'm not a fan of double zero, but I do see how you might want to play it. Uh, there's no space in this deck, otherwise I might play double zero. Triple Curtain Razor, you still want to up as many triple cards as possible. Uh, three Chronograph, three Cerberus. Curtain Razor's level four, so you still have to play it, uh, whether it's uh, one Electrum or not. If it was like level five, I would not play it, but since level four, it's relevant. Also, the fact that Exiton is still a card, you want to play as many level fours as possible. Uh, next, we've got three Cerberus and three Jackal. Uh, again, I'm sorry that I'm on the internet, guys. It's literally 5 a.m. out here. My whole house is asleep, and I don't want to wake them up, and I have to give you guys a video. So, unfortunately, I can't, uh, like, pick the Cerberus so you can see, like, on the left over here what card it is. Uh, for the rookies out there, uh, just put in the comments if you don't know what card is what, and I'll uh, explain what card it is, and I'll, like, tell you the name so you guys don't get confused. Uh... I'll also put the download link of this deck list in the description. So if you want to play this deck on Dueling Book, you simply just download the link for free and just play it. Because uh, I want you guys to practice it. You guys might uh, lose, screw up at first, but you'll find that two or three interruptions is more than adequate to win the duel with multiple cards and uh, pluses. This deck still pluses more than anything. Triple Jackal, you need uh, as many one-card interruptions as possible. Like I said, and Jackal's the best one. Uh, any one-card interruption that's a pendulum is incredibly underrated. Uh, you guys saw what Kieran did. Uh, I know none of these are on the level of Kirin, uh, Rip Kirin, but there's still one card interruptions that are pendulums. You want that uh, versatility to be able to pendulum summon an interruption or use it as scale if you need to. Having that versatility in pendulums is absolutely incredible. Hence why we're not playing Apex AV on Luna, Dark Lady, any of those cards because they're not, uh, or Spell Canceler even, they're not pendulums. We can't play them. Only The only thing that could go in your deck is pendulums or spells that search pendulums. 
or special pendulums. Uh, so triple persona dragon. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this card is, it's odd eyes persona dragon. You should know all the other cards in here, but odd eyes persona dragon. Uh, it's the best odd eyes card by a landslide. It's a one card interruption, and it stops uh, monster effects from the extra deck. So when your opponent is soul days and it cannot be chain blocked. <coughs> so for those of you who don't know what chain block means, it's a uh, when your opponent is, uh, puts out like a Goki monster, and uh, when your opponent uh, makes a Soul Day with a Goki, they can make Goki Chain Link 2 and a Soul Day Chain Link 1, making you not able to negate the Soul Day. But if you use this, you, uh, you, this can't get chain blocked, because uh, it's like a, it's like a Veiler. So you just, you don't have to use it when your opponent activates the effect, you can just negate the effect at any time, which is extremely relevant in the meta, because there's a lot of cards that chain block different cards in this format. Even like Kandina. It just, well, you, this can't stop Kandina, but... There's a lot of cards that chain cards <coughs> to stop. I just heard someone literally in the middle of the night. That would have been uh, that would have been Ox just coming out to my car literally in the middle of a parking lot. Anyways, uh, people know better than to mess with the pen god. All right, we're gonna try and keep this video under 20 minutes. Uh, first 10 minutes theory, next 10 minutes just deck profile. You need to play three Persona because the one card interruption is searchable Sky Iris. Next, we want to play one scale eight uh, Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum. Sometimes if you draw a double Odd Eyes, uh, two Odd Eyes. You search for this and you pop the other, you get a free summon. Uh, it is extremely relevant. Uh, it also leads to another, it's another pseudo turbo card. We don't play Rescue Hamster anymore because uh, it's very tough for you to search a Rescue Hamster without uh, at least a second Electrum. Uh, yes, it really hurts the deck not to have two and th uh, the third Electrum, but Pendulum are so powerful that it does not even need a second or third Electrum. The one Electrum lets, still lets the deck go off even if you don't have to use it. So it's okay that it got... It sucks that it got banned, but it's still the best deck, so don't even worry. Uh, next, we play 3 Amorphid Sloth. This is a Pendulum Floodgate. Uh, it absolutely destroys Goki. Absolutely destroys Goki, especially when you, uh, most of your interruptions are uh, one-card Pendulum interruptions. Uh, so, for example, Janky, Jackal, Persona Dragon. You have 20 ways to go into these ones where you don't need the extra deck for one-card interruption. So you can go Sloth jackal janky and say good luck have fun and uh your opponent cannot out it your opponent simply just cannot out it uh it's incredibly hard they have to neg like crazy to really out of to be able to out a sloth they literally have to open uh they literally have to open suprex and the twist cobra exactly that's like both of them exactly and uh, it's incredibly tough we're gonna close the car uh anyway so it doesn't make noise and stuff but so you have to literally open Suprex and Cobra. Not one of them, not like not one single one. They have to open both of them. Not Cobra and another Goki, but they have to open two of them. The chances that are extremely minimal. Sloth is an auto win against Goki. We also play Triple Bambuku and Nekomata. Pluses are hard to come by without Triple Electrum. So you want as many pluses as you can. We took out all the DDs. There's no more DDs in the deck because they're only good if you could use three Electrums for it. Uh, I'm doing a little spoiler here. I'm going to show you guys a list in the future where you still activate Electrum three times in one turn. Uh, utilizing a few different cards, which I don't want to say now, but I'll say it. Well, I love you guys. You use Mithrilium to recycle the Electrum, and then you use Omega. You link away Omega for nothing, and then since Omega is in the graveyard, you bring the Electrum back to the extra and do it again. So you use Electrum three times, and it ends on a board of uh, literally the exact same board. The exact same board of Firewall, Griffin, Vortex with a Trap card. The exact same board that we did with three Electrum. There's, uh, there's one big issue with it. Uh... Because there's only one Electrum, like physically one Electrum, if it gets hand trapped, you can't do any of this. So I don't want to release that deck yet until I realize, uh, until I figure out a consistent way to stop hand traps, uh, like a consistent way to make a, uh, hand traps like useless. Uh, in the same build, you play a bunch of metal foes. You make summon sorceress uh, a real thing. Uh, we have summon sor uh, We have a we have a bunch of metal foes in the side deck here. The side deck is it's not a real side deck. It's just cards that we might play in the future. It's getting super hot in here. We're gonna put the we're gonna put the car back on, put the AC. Anyways, uh, yeah. So those are the monsters. Then we got a foolish and triple shrine. You still need a triple shrine for the dark worms and the sixty cards. So playing four uh, foolish burials doesn't matter. Uh, we played triple sky iris one terraforming. There's not enough space right now to play uh, triple terraforming. Otherwise, I would. And if I had space, I'd also make a double persona dragon. Uh, sorry, not double persona dragon. Double uh, arc uh, allies arc pendulum dragon. To ensure that we always have a scale 8 so we don't banish it. Uh, we play triple desires, triple allure. Uh, the only thing that matters is what you banish is the uh, persona dragon or the gate 0. 
but I don't want to play double of them because there's no space. But if you were to cut anything out, I would just double, make gate zero, two, uh, two gate zero, and two Odd-Eyes Arc Pendulum. Triple Allure is broken in this deck. Everything's a dark, and all the spells search for darks. Uh, triple Duelist Line, Triple Pen Call. The one downfall of playing 20 spells is it loses to Droll Reincarnation, but that deck sucks. So uh, your side deck is going to be a bunch of random uh, hand traps and monsters. Just take out a, a bunch of the search spells for those so they can't Droll Reincarnate you. Uh, like Ash and stuff, just so like they can't, like you just stop the Droll Reincarnation. Uh, the deck absolutely sucks. The only way they beat you is if they draw a Droll Reincarnation and the chances of that are slim. And if you're a good player like myself, you could tell if they have Droll Reincarnation or not. You could just tell by the looks in their face. You could tell if they're playing fast. Because especially if they don't hand trap you, if they don't, uh, if they don't uh, activate too many back row, uh, then you know like throughout your plays without activating any spells, because you're gonna act, you're gonna set all your spells and you're gonna do your plays like there's no draw reincarnation to save your spell, right? Like you don't search anything, you go into electrum. If they don't hand, if they don't interrupt your electrum, they have draw. That makes sense. So you could you could read this. Uh, you could uh, activate foolish, send dark worm, think be like, uh, don't even activate the effect. Like just uh, put uh, dark worm on the field. And just stare, like stare into space. Put dark. Well, if you if you face uh, if you face trick stars, activate foolish burial. Put dark worm in grave. Special dark worm, and just look at your opponent straight in the eye. Don't activate a fact. Don't say nothing. Just poker face, just like this. Just stare. Don't say a word, and look into your opponent's eyes, straight into the soul of your opponent. You could read if he has droll or not. You'll be able to read it. Trust me. You just have to try. It seems weird, but if you just look close enough, you'll see if he's trying to bait you into using the effect. If he baits you too hard, he has it. If he baits you incredibly, incredibly hard, he doesn't have it. That makes sense? Like, there's a few certain tells that you should be able to tell. I'll do another video on it in the future on how to tell what hand trap your opponent has. And if your opponent even has a hand trap based on his, not just body language, but uh, by table talking. Table talking is a big thing. And by uh, doing a few jokes or table talking... You figure out what hand traps they have. It's not it's not dirty. It's not a bad move to do. It's just an easy way to, to gain a competitive advantage. Just like poker. Uh, you just do reads. Uh, so, yeah, that that's why the spells are... That's why I took the spells out in the previous list. I went through this 3 Electrum. I cut from uh, 60 cards to 40. Just so I don't get Droll Reincarnation. But if, if you read properly, even against a great player... Even if Jesse Cotton did it, I could read it from him. And from anyone. So, just be careful and be wary of that. Uh, next, we're going to do the extra deck. So we play one Electrum, one Land for Lachis, whatever that card is now. You must play it uh, with only one Electrum. You need uh, another card that goes downwards twice. Uh, we play both Nightmares uh, that do that are utility. Uh, so Cerberus and Phoenix. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, the only card here that people should not know is, uh, might not know is a Morphid Sloth. Uh, it's a three card, the Dragon one, the right in the middle. So for those noobs that don't know what the card is, it's called the Morphid Sloth. But if you don't know, just download Dueling Book and uh, download the... Download the deck profile I'm going to post uh, so you could use it and you could just test with it, see the name and stuff. So it's Land for Lachis, Double Nightmare, you play Nightmare Mermaid as well. Obviously no Ibli, but you just play the Mermaid in case you, uh, let's say for example you're facing, there's going to be a lot of back row this format. So if you're facing Brickstar, you're not going to be able to clear some of your board. So you're going to have something like a Dead Tornado Dragon or like, I don't know, like a like a Oaf Dragon or something just in the field, just randomly link them away. Nightmare Phoenix, destroy a back row, and then go into Nightmare Mermaid. And just like that, you got a thing going down. So the Nightmares are actually really good in Pendulum, especially with Mermaid. Because you just go downwards. One Boar Load. Again, all the links are literally just utility. You're not going to, uh, into the links that much. Uh, the other Another card I might put in is Boral, uh, Boral, Boral Sword. But again, it's not necessary. It's good for utility, but it's not that necessary. Uh, Totem Bird, Dweller, Tornado. Uh, and then Exiton Knight. Uh, I don't know why the hell this card came back. It's going to be banned instantly in the next ban list. But uh, it's extremely important. Uh, you need it to clear boards. Uh, Naruto, the Vortex package, Omega, and Clearwing. Clearwing is broken this format. Uh, they, no one expects it. And because you play um, nine ways to go into harmonizing, uh, it's in, and especially uh, even if you just go Wisdom and Oath, even if you have Wisdom and Oath, you uh, Oath Wisdom, uh, you don't activate Oath Effect to add the Wisdom back. You use Sky Iris to pop the harmonizing. Oath add it back, right? There's a lot of small tricks. To, uh, you have so many ways to go into harmonizing just like that. Even if you open Oath Dragon, or Wisdom Eye on a, on a high scale, uh, you use Electrum to send the Harmonizing, and even if they go so good Electrum, you have Harmonizing. So every single turn, you have access to Harmonizing. I might even put a third Synchro because, uh, like a Dragster, because it makes a uh, Time Gazer live with Harmonizing. So uh, doing the Dragster. But anyways, that's Extra Deck. Cards that I might play that uh, I put in the Instant 15 cards is, uh, I might play Triple Avion. 
Uh, it's not an inter. Uh, it's not a pendulum, which goes against my belief. Uh, pendulum decks, I believe, should have sixty cards that are pendulum or search pendulum. Wow, this video is twenty-five minutes. I thought it would only be twenty, but whatever. I might play two more terraforming. I might play uh, one more Adai's Absolute, or not Adai's Absolute, Adai's, uh, Adai's Arc Dragon, uh, because we need two just in case you banish it. You really want to have Sky Iris to search a high scale sometimes, because uh, the deck is missing high scales more than low scales. Uh, we're not playing Firewall, Nightmare Griffin, or Nightmare Unicorn at the moment. Uh, you can't do crazy plays with this deck. Uh, it's just very straightforward. It's a non-think deck. It's uh, plus a few times. Go into Electrum. If it doesn't get hand trap, cool, you plus even more. You literally just go into Electrum to plus, not to get actual interruptions. So if Electrum gets stopped, it doesn't matter, you just plus less, but you still have the same amount of interruptions. That makes sense. So you can't really go into Firewall, or Griffin, or a Unicorn uh, just for utility, but there's no space right now. Uh, the Metal Foes I was talking about, I might play the Metal Foes in the future. Uh, the Metal Foes with Omega allows you to use Electrum three times in one turn, which then allows you to Firewall and Griffin with the Trap, probably Imperial Order, this format, with Vortex. So I'll show you guys the combo later. But it's super susceptible to hand traps. And I want to give you guys absolute best deck to play for YCS 200. And whatever regional you want to play this on for the next week or the week after. Uh, this is the best list of Pendulum right now. Also in the future, I'm playing with the Zephra build. Uh, we're talking about one card interruptions here. But we have, how can you talk one card interruption without Zephra, right? So we're uh, going to be playing a bunch of terraformings. Why not play Oracle of Zephra? Why not play Zephra? Pop it with Iris after use its effect. I uh, have a way to actually even... Uh, Utilize Zephyr's effect that Pendulum summons twice. It's hilarious. And uh, the level 6 Zephyr lets you uh, add the trap. Uh, lets you protect all your Zephyr's. Like, uh, Zephyr's are actually a fantastic archetype. I can't believe I didn't get into it sooner. But uh, if you're playing a Pendulum deck with a bunch of one-card interruptions, Zephyr would be a fantastic addition. So I'm going to be playing with a bunch of different builds. In the next few days, I'll be releasing different builds. But as of right now, I believe 100% this is the best build right now. Uh, destroys Goki, destroys Sky Circuit, destroy Brickstar. Goki is literally whoever goes first wins. Uh, even if they go first, they brick a lot more. Without Goblin, they need a broken, broken hand to do it. And uh, especially for YCS 200, I'd say 2% uh, of players will know how to extra link without Goblin and Invoker. 2% of players will be able to do it. 2%. Only the elite of the elite uh, that tell their teammates. That's it. So with that being said, you don't even need to fear an extra link that much. Uh, the real side deck would be uh, three reboot, three twister, and nine hand traps. Uh, triple at no, three reboot and twelve hand traps. The hand traps is literally only for FTKs. You don't want to lose the FTKs in a sixty card deck. So you'll take out the six draw cards, and you'll take out three sloth and three uh of whatever you don't like in the deck. So probably like one shrine, two lines or something. Uh, always keep the magic specters. Always keep the one card interruptions. The, uh, always keep the odd eyes engine. Always keep six uh, mythical beasts. Always keep the curtain raisers. Just take out uh. The sloths, the uh, shrine, and the draw cards. Take those out and uh, add hand traps. If you're playing a deck that doesn't play hand traps, uh, keep all draw cards. Uh, if you're not playing a deck that's not Goki or Pendulum, uh, do not side hand traps against any deck except side Triple Ash against Brickstar. Not for the actual deck, but just to stop uh, Reincarnation and play Triple Impermanence for any deck that plays Floodgates. Not because of the deck. But because uh, uh, basically lets you play like 21 cards in your side deck because uh, you're playing all these hand traps against Goki anyways. But you can also use Impermanence to stop. Let's say, for example, you're playing Altergeist. So you, it's uh, crazy utility. It gives you the option to use Impermanence on, for example, one of their actual monsters, like uh, Multi Faker or whatever. It doesn't even activate on field, but uh, activate on Multi Faker. Or if you want, you could set it, wait a turn, stop an, uh, stop, uh, stop an anti spell or something, right? So it has multiple utility and still allows you to uh, have as many hand traps in your side deck as possible. So side deck for YCS 200, play 3 reboot, 12 hand traps. Those hand traps being 3 impermanence, 3 ash, and 6 of whatever you want. I'll say uh, triple droll and triple ghost ogre. And just those 15, nothing else. Uh, reboot's all you need. 3 reboot, 3 impermanence is more than enough for floodgate decks, especially with 6 draw cards. Let's say draw 2. And if you don't draw, whatever. You have poison, you have a lot of ways to get rid of it. Uh, so don't even worry. You have a bunch of beaters. So this is the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It is 30 minutes of a video. Sorry that it's so long. But I thought for the very first video, I want it to be super informative. It's a super, super informative video. So I do apologize in advance if you guys are got bored throughout it. But it's an informative video. Uh, I'm going to do more informative videos in the future. This is the very first one of this format. So I thought I just want to make sure you guys knew everything there is to know about it. So enjoy my 30 minutes of blabbering.
But if you understood something from these 30 minutes, you will destroy everyone you guys face. So, sorry that I got banned, guys, but don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. I got you guys. If I don't top, one of you guys have to top. So, thank you guys for absolutely everything. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Nothing changes for my channel. Like the video. Show your support, guys. I'm not going anywhere. It's 5 a.m. out here. I'm still making a video of the day, the day that I got banned, the day the election got limited. I'm not going anywhere. I love you guys. So, have a great night. See you guys in the next video. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving.